This is Ben with bkashaaudio.com and in this video I'm going to talk about a little pandemic project I've been working on that I like to call the musical cyberdeck. If you prefer to read about it, you can click on the link in the video description and that will lead you to a full write-up about all the components used, how it was assembled, the software, etc. The inspiration for this came from a need for a mobile synthesis slash guitar modeling platform that I could take with me to live shows, easily carry around, put on a keyboard stand, but also use at home for music production, something that was battery powered, mobile, and would allow me to make music without having to stare at my typical work computer that I use day in day out. I wanted it to feel like a standalone piece of hardware. And inspiration for that came from other devices, seeing things like the PolyN Tracker, the MPC, as well as uh, smaller devices like the M8 Tracker. The basis for this is a Raspberry Pi 4 with two gigabytes of RAM. So I took this Raspberry Pi 4 and got an enclosure for it that is available on Amazon. The link to that exact enclosure is going to be in the attached write-up I have on my website. And you just pop it in there. Uh, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 7-inch official screen, which is quite good. And this is the core, and I worked with this for a little bit. I did some load testing. I tested out all the software just to make sure that it would actually do, it could handle what I wanted it to be able to do. I ran some temperature tests and found that it was getting kind of hot, so I did install a Raspberry Pi shim, a heatsink shim in here with a fan, which helped to cool it off by about 15 degrees. And I do have results of the temperature tests on uh, my write-up. So once I got the core part of the CyberDeck working, I wanted to build out the rest of it. This is made primarily of off-the-shelf parts, so there's not really any soldering that was done here. The only soldering was to get the GPIO pins connected for the heatsink fan. Outside of that, everything else is just glued together or uh, using dual-lock Velcro to stick together. I designed the base of the unit using Tinkercad and took that design and sent it to my coworker, who then 
adjusted it so it was easier to print. So it was actually made in three different pieces that notched together. And what I did is when I received it, I took those pieces and I just used Gorilla Glue Super Glue to fasten them together. And that is the base. It uh, was 3D printed with uh, ABS plastic. On top of that, we have the PreSonus AudioBox USB 96 as the audio interface. It's class compliant and works really well with Linux and the Raspberry Pi. So I wanted this to sit on the bottom and have all the front panel controls easily accessible for things like headphone or input gain, um, and then be able to run everything uh, connection-wise out to the house PA or to a recording interface or whatever out of the back so that the cable management was clean. So that got mounted on this platform on the right. This numpad, which is just a mechanical numpad, is used for accessing certain functions in Sunvox. The keyboard is an Elisa's V-Mini which has a nice small footprint and is enough for what I want to be able to do live, which is mainly some simple synth lines and triggering of samples. Over on the left-hand side, there is a very large Charmast uh, power supply, and this is about 2,600 milliamps of power, and this can run this setup for about 10 hours according to my estimates. I haven't done a full battery drain but I have done uh, some partial drains and then sort of extrapol extrapolated how long that can run. Attached to the Charmass power supply is a simple Canakit Pi switch. It just cuts the power on and off to the Raspberry Pi so that way I can actually power it on and off without having to pull the plug out of the unit. There is no sort of ups power supply or management so if you run out of battery it's just gonna shut down non-gracefully. To allow the display to articulate similar to it would on an MPC so you can get a better viewing angle I've just used a cell phone stand that articulates so this is something you can get for a couple dollars off of Amazon and it's just got a little foot and you can set the height that it articulates at and it's just, everything is just velcroed together. So the stand is velcroed to the base. The uh, Pi case is velcroed to the stand. Uh, Elisa's keyboard is velcroed to the base. This is velcroed to the top of the PreSonus. In terms of synthesis, what I use is Sunvox. So that allows me to play back samples. It's also a full modular synthesis environment. The Elisa's V-Mini is set up for input, so I can play notes, and I can use the keyboard to input notes or play synths or samples live. The numpad is used primarily to access things that are buried in the hamburger menus. So even though Sunvox has a very rich and capable uh, touch interface, there are certain things that I often access here, like copy, paste, undo, redo, that are just more convenient to have mapped to the numpad. So I have the full numpad layout in the article linked in the description, but I'll just go through it. So transport controls are the first four buttons on the top. So we have play from start. This is loop section. This is just play, stop, and this is record. Numlock is non-functional. You can't map that, so that stays unmapped. We have undo, redo, this is delete, insert, and then these are mapped like WASD keys, sort of like you would use for a first person shooter. So if I drag the interface down here, you can see I can go up, down, left, right. Seven and nine are page up and page down. And then we've got cut, copy, paste. The zero key allows you to enable and disable editing of the grid period key will insert a note off and then plus and minus are used for the cycle notes feature so if you select a section and you want to cycle the notes up or down this will allow you to do it so if I actually grab a note here you can see you can cycle up or you can cycle down those are just functions that I use that are more convenient to have mapped to a keypad 
And it's sort of in the spirit of something like the Poly N Tracker that has that mechanical keyboard control cluster on the right hand side of the screen. Another cool feature of this is I can use the open source software Modep for guitar amp modeling or for just effects if I wanted to run an external synthesizer through this and use it as a standalone effects unit. I can do that with either Sunvox or Modep. Modep is web enabled so I can call up the interface on a larger screen, create my patches and then just load up whatever patch I want from the uh, pedal board library. It also supports snapshots so I can save multiple snapshots using the same pedal board and load up whichever one I want. Again, the interface is a little small on the 7-inch screen, but once you set it up the way you want, you can hook up an external MIDI controller to trigger the loading of patches or uh, moving through the snapshots. For live performance, I can connect to Reaper's web UI via a browser, and this allows me to trigger playback tracks, automation, and lighting on our playback machine that sits at the back of the stage. The operating system loaded on the Raspberry Pi is Patchbox OS, and that is an operating system that out of the box comes ready for low latency audio. It has jack set up, uh, modep for the guitar modeling, it also allows you to load pure data patches and tons of other little goodies that you can find in there. Another neat little thing I figured out is if you hook up a game controller, you can actually play Pico 8 games pretty well. Now I have no keyboard or mouse on the system, so most of the interaction is via the touchscreen as well as this on-screen keyboard I've enabled, and details how to enable that are in the article linked in the description. So that's a rundown of the Musical Cyber Deck. I don't know if this is the final version, if it's just going to be version 1. I've thought about making a different enclosure for it that's a little bit more integrated and slick looking. But we'll see, after I take it out on the road, uh, what changes I decide to make. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and visit bkashaaudio.com for more tutorials and music.